investing and like success itself taught me to be the man I am today. Mm. Awesome, man. And when did you start the Fresh and Fit podcast? That was early 2021. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So basically what happened was at that point in time, I got bought my property. I was paying, paying rent. I had extra free time from, um, you know, my job. And as well, I had money coming in. I was just like, you know, so wasn't paying rent, overtime money. And I was doing whatever I wanted to do. Mm. Bought a Range Rover. You know, uh, I was living my life a little, bit, a little bit more freely, doing more fun stuff. And then I said, like, you know what? I'm going to do YouTube seriously now. I have more time and money. Mm. <clears throat> so back then, I'd always see these videos go viral online. Those gold digger frame videos, remember? Yes, I do. So I'm like, you know what? I can get a Lamborghini from one of my <laughs> friends. I can do this. It's not that hard. Yeah. Mind you, my first video was kind of like wonky, but hey, I, I made it work. Yeah, yeah. And funny enough, um, <clears throat> what was your first? What was your first video? So it's funny because it wasn't dating. It wasn't even like social dynamics. It was actually like a gold digger prank. Mm. So I had seen people online making videos and they go viral for doing these pranks. And I'm like, hold on, you're telling me I can get a Lamborghini, find a girl, and have that interaction go viral. So funny enough, my friend had a rental company. He had an orange Lamborghini. I got it for the day, went to downtown Wynwood, and I did that exact prank. However, I spent, literally Zuby, three hours waiting for one reaction, which is, hey, you know what? I'm good. I'm going to walk away. And they come back and say, oh, wait, this is your car? I'll talk to you now. Mm. It's funny because that interaction itself is hitting so many trigger points of actually, like, making people have emotional ties, you know, maybe hate, maybe love. So it's a good video to go viral for anyway. But... Long story short, I did that video, and in that video it was two intera two interactions. One was genuine, the very first one. Three hours I was waiting there, finally got one interaction. Mm. The second one, I said, "Screw this, bro. There's no way I'm gonna be here for ten hours <laughs> trying to get this video done. No way." What was the reaction you were expecting or hoping for? So what I see online is people park their car, girls walk past, and be like, "Hey, what's your name? I want to talk to you." They kind of shun them off, like, "Oh, just walk away and ignore them, right?" And then they come back when they go to the car. It's like, "Oh, is this your car?" Okay. And then they say, okay, I'll get in your car, I'll talk to you, whatever. Bro, literally, man, I don't know what it was, but it maybe just me, <laughs> but it didn't work. I'm just like, yo, just keep walking. They're like, oh, no, I'm good. And yeah. they just keep walking, right? So then I was like, okay, I'm going to tell this girl, listen. Next girl I'll talk to is, listen, I'm doing this video for YouTube. You want to be part of it? Cool. And it worked because she was like, you know what? I'm totally down for it. Mm. She's played the whole role, whatever. And funny enough, that video went viral on Rollstar, Twitter, and YouTube. Okay. So... I realized, okay, hold on here. I can copy this and form with somebody else on YouTube. Maybe add a little twist to it and it can go viral. I'll do it again. So I did three videos like that uh, back to back and they all went viral. Now, funny enough as well, I'm in Miami walking around. I was like, oh, you're that guy on YouTube. There's a gold digger prank. So I'm like, wait, am I actually really viral? So that's the first time I actually stopped being viral and, you know, the effects of it. Mm. So that was pretty good for me, that experience. And I said, you know what? If anyone can do it, I can do it as well. So at that point, I decided I was going to do YouTube full time. Um, what, what with the the actual like aspect of doing, working my job too as well. So I, I was like, okay, if I can if I can do this multiple times back to back, then I can make it work. Okay. So your first plan with YouTube was just doing prank videos. That was the original plan. Because that's all I knew. Okay. Because I was like, how to go viral? How to get like views and clicks? And I mean, that's all I could think of at that point. Yeah. And just timeline wise, because I, I know more about your backstory than some people might. Yeah. I know at some point after you came to the States, you you got married. And is that yes. the prank stuff, the prank videos, is that after or before or around the same time? I'm so just trying is, to get this, the timeline here. After. Okay. So this is what happened with the whole marriage stuff, right? Okay. So this is the first time I'm saying actually like fully actually on camera. Okay, all right. <clears throat> so back then, uh, when I first came to America, I was pretty much new to how it works. You know, I didn't really understand how things were in the real world, so to speak, in America. But then after my first year of saving some money up, having some actual foundation, I started, I started partying a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know? So I would party every weekend with my friends from, like, my roommates. And I met this girl in the bathroom line. And I was like, okay, what's your name? You know, what do you do for work? And I'm like, oh, you're pretty cool. Let's go out. In bathroom line. <laughs> yeah, it was, it's, it's random, bro. It's so random. She's with her friend. I was like, yo, okay. you're pretty cute. What's your name? Start talking, whatever. And we start dating, you know? Mm. So within that period of time, I wanted to do the right thing. Mm. And no, rush, no, yeah, no so I was raised, raised in a Christian family. And I was taught if I'm going to really date a girl and take her serious, I should be married with her. Because mm. we want to move in together, all stuff. And it wasn't too fast. 
looking back, yes, it was too fast, but I didn't want to do the wrong thing and, you know, make it a bad thing. Yeah, I get that. How long had you guys been together? Six months. Six months? Yeah. And then you got married after six months? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, and then I didn't understand as well what it was to date a girl with a kid because mm. she had a kid. Okay. So, you know, back then I didn't, I wasn't watching like RP content like that. I mean, here and there I watch it, but not really like that seriously. And uh, I got into that situation and I don't forget, my mom was like, Walter, do you know what you're really doing here? And I'm like, yeah, you know, I like her. She's cool. You know, I'm doing what God want, want, wants me to do. So this, this is fine. Yeah. But I didn't understand what it took to really date someone with a kid. Mm. And uh, looking back, I should have looked into it more to see what it entails because I was not ready to be a dad. Yeah. Oh, and that gets a stepdad. So I went through our process and I learned a lot about marriage, you know, um, dating itself, being with somebody long term. And I was like, yo, like, because back in Barbados, bro, I would just like have fun. Yeah. With what did you bros. learn? Hmm? What did you learn? I learned one, if you're going to be married to somebody, it should be for life and it should be serious. And you should be ready to take on all the responsibilities that come with that, which mm-hmm. means either you step up to the plate for being a dad for somebody's kid, or even, for example, just having consistent action to lead to a, de- a desired result. Mm-hmm. And I was more like trying to be successful back then. I was focused on me becoming better. So me, for me to take on someone else's kid and them was a lot, bro. And I was like, okay, I have a choice to make here. Either I stay on this path of taking care of them, providing for them, being with them, or I cut it and say, listen, this isn't working out. I'm going to be successful. I can do both at the same time. Because knowing me, I can't, fo- I can't multitask like that. It's either focus on what I need to do right now or both and then never make it happen. So I'll never forget, uh, it was like a year into the, into the marriage. And uh, I was still working at the insurance company back then. And uh, I was in the car late night after work. Just sitting to myself like, damn, this is my life right now. I want more out of life. I, I don't want to be stuck in this bubble and in this like marriage and stuff like that. So I go on YouTube and I search in the search bar, oh, dating single mothers. Bro, I found so many videos, but there were t- three that, st- that stood up to me the most. Tom Likas did a radio show back in the day. Mm-hmm. I was talking about like women and dating. And I watched so many videos of him talking to people, their experiences. And I was like, damn, that is me. I feel alone in the house. I feel kind of trapped. I feel like it's two against one at all times. It's weird, mm. right? How old was the kid? Just out of me. Three years old. Three, okay. Man, he wasn't a bad kid per se, yeah. but, <clears throat> you know, it's almost like, it's not my kid, bro. So it's, it's, I can't punish him how I want to punish him. Mm. For example, you, you underestimated what you were taking on. Yes. Yeah. And I had no idea what it fully entailed until getting into it. Yeah. So I watched that video with Tom Likas. I watched uh, Richard Cooper, Entrepreneur Cars. I watched Solo TV 84. And it was almost like, you know what? This is not for me. I had to break it to her uh, as soon as possible. So literally the next day, I said, listen, I got to talk to you real quick. We sat down. We spoke about it. And she was sad, obviously, at first because she loved, loved, loved me. But it was like, I just knew I couldn't be that guy for her. Mm-hmm. So after that, we got divorce papers. Did you love her? No. Okay. I, I, I think for me, I never really loved a girl mm-hmm. ever in my life because I look at it as, okay, is it going to benefit me or is it going to be the right thing to do? If that's the case, I'll do it. But I'm not really doing it for, like, love. That makes sense. Got it. So the motivation was more, I'm just trying to trying to understand your mindset at the time. It yeah. was more like you're from a Christian background. Yeah. You want to do the right thing as it pertains to your religion and family and culture. Um, and so you kind of jumped the gun and thought, well, I like her. She's attractive. So let's just... Let's just tie the knot. Yeah, and also, uh, if I'm going to be living with a girl, I should be married to her under, the, under that house. Yep. You know, so that's why I was like, you know, I'll marry her. There's like the pressure, <clears throat> but it wasn't like a big marriage. It's like I went to the uh, the courts, yeah. got signed papers, and that was it. Got it. It wasn't like a big marriage, or whatever. Um, but overall, that experience taught me. Listen, at the end of the day, they have one one life to, one life path to go on. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could either be as hard as you want it to be, or as smooth as you want it to be. But in that sense, I didn't want to have anything stop me from being successful. So unfortunately, that was in my way. And looking back, yes, it was my fault for even getting into that situation. But I'm glad I did. I got out of it because like, if I didn't get out of it, I would not be here today. Yeah. Okay. So fast forwarding a little bit up to mm-hmm. early 2021, mm-hmm. your YouTube content changes and you start the Fresh and Fit podcast yeah. with Myron. How did that come about? So basically, like I said before, I started going viral on YouTube for the Gold Digger Pranks. Some other pranks as well. 
And then I got an interview with Solo TV before. He's like, what do you do for a living? You know, where you're from, all that stuff. We did an interview. Actually, I should probably find that video. It was actually a pretty good video. Mm-hmm. And then um, he's like, oh, yo, bro, like a week later, he's like, bro, there's a guy in your city named Myron Gaines that uh, he does fitness videos. I was like, fitness videos? I'm not really into gym like that. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm all right, brother. I'm cool. Yeah. He's like, no, bro, I'm going to connect you with him. He's cool. He's the same mindset. So talk to him. I was like, all right, cool. So then we DM each other on Instagram. And uh, for like an hour, we're like on the phone just talking about real estate, girls, dating. I'm like, we got some of the same issues in Miami, man. This is It's a tough marketplace, you know? So then he's like, you know what? Let's get dinner tonight. My roommate, myself and Myron had dinner at 42 in Midtown. It's like a local spot, for like brunch and like dinner. So we go over there, we chop it up for like two hours almost. And we're like, yo, bro, we have such similar mindsets, for example, of like dating, lifestyle girls. Let's do a podcast. Mm-hmm. I was like, why not? Let's do it. So we did one podcast like the following week. I was at my spot. It was his spot. We did it virtually, of course. And uh, people liked it. We spoke, we spoke about dating itself. Uh, we broke down social media dating and cold approach, which is like in-person dating and online. And people saw, got, got to see like two different opposing sides and what each side did for each, each, you know, each individual. Mm-hmm. And people liked it. So we did one, one a week then two a week and three a week and then it became like a thing where like we did it weekly. And you both had your full-time jobs at this time, right? Yeah. Now, mind you, uh, if you know Myron, mm-hmm. he's very vocal about how he feels and he's passionate about it. Really? <laughs> so, so, so people take it sometimes as, you know, a little bit too edgy, whatever. Uh-huh. But regardless of the fact, though, um, we were speaking our truths of what we saw was there. And the truth is the truth. No matter who it who says whatever it is, there's one truth, right? So at that point, it's like, okay, we're being real. This is, this is, our, this is our actual lifestyle we're living. So at that point, uh, it became a thing like where our jobs were like, listen, guys, we get it. You're making content online, but it is a bit not safe for work, so to speak, right? Mm-hmm. And uh, we, we had a choice to make. Um, we had Patreon, we had YouTube, and I was like, okay, we're making some, some money here, but it's not like a lot, you know? And uh, is it worth going all the way in and leaving our comfortable jobs? Because remember, a little bit over time, working in tech, He's doing his, uh, you know, it's just stuff with the government. Mm-hmm. I'm like, damn. So at that point, we had me, Myron, and Chris, which is our producer. Yeah, I know Chris. Yeah. And uh, Myron was like, listen, if you guys are all are willing to go all the way in, I am too. Mm. So we decided to go all the way in. Do you know how many subscribers you had at the time? Maybe like 10, 12, 12K around okay, there. Got yeah. It. So it wasn't like a lot, but it was like a good start, I think, for most people. Mm. And uh, we left our jobs. And it was kind of scary because... You don't know what's going to happen. You know, it's like you're taking a leap of faith where like, either it works hard or you, or you fail, you know? And uh, I was like, you know what? I have one life to live. Mm. I'm going to take a risk. And he did too. And it's funny, my brand was CEO, which stands for control every opportunity. I okay. was like, this is an opportunity in front of me. If I don't seize it now, when will I ever seize it? And funny enough, it worked out. We're here today talking about it. But that's how I met Myron back in the day. So we started the Fetch Fit podcast, as you know today. Yeah, no doubt, man. Well, a lot of people, even if they haven't watched full episodes, I'm sure Lord knows how many people somewhere on the internet and on social media have at least at a minimum seen seen a clip. (laughs) I was with some uh, football players yesterday, NBA players, and they were like, bro, I watched it, but I can't talk about it in public. (laughs) I'm like, brother, I know. Everyone's seen it. And then, uh, well, I won't say his name, but um, yeah. But it was just funny that people watch the show, but they yeah. really want to talk so about you, it. So you guys, you guys created a very unique style of show, mm-hmm. which now it's a formula that several people have used over the past few years. Yeah. But I remember the first time I was on the show was, was it 2021, I think? It was like 2020? 2020, yeah, 2020, 2021. Yeah. But, um, you know, you've got the the daytime shows where it's just you guys and the guests, more of like a standard Business, interview. Stories. Exactly. And then you've got the late night show, which is live streamed, and you bring in anywhere from four to ten women plus you guys and a male guest, maybe on rare occasions a female guest. Yeah. But that sort of formula where you just have this round table with 10 to 12 people and it can get very chaotic, all of these, you know, conversations about all sorts of topics. You're being nice. I'm being nice. <laughs> um, well, look, there's there's a range um, because I think you get, there's a skew that happens on the internet where the most inflammatory and controversial and extreme, for lack of a better term, 
stuff is what goes viral. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times people who just have heard a fresh and fit, their general perception is going to be based on a moment or a few moments that Uh, maybe, that maybe represent 0.1% of the overall content that stuff like extremely over indexes. Yeah. So it's just like, Oh, like there's people who don't even know you do the daytime show. Right. They think hundred percent. Exactly. They think, you know, they're not aware of any of the conversations about fitness or wealth building or careers or, uh, society, culture, politics, any of that. They don't, they're not even aware you guys even do any of that. They think it's just purely girls. dating relationships, girls. They think all of the girls are just like only fans or they're, uh, sex workers or whatever the case may be. As far as I know, the majority actually are not. Yes. Um, but this is the image that people have. But how did you guys even come up with that concept and format? Because it's pretty weird. So it was random luck. Okay. And uh, when I said luck, it was actually like random because back then uh, we were doing like one-on-one videos, me and Myron, uh, talking about like our experiences in dating. And uh, it was a double date we had late night. <clears throat> we were in Brickle. We had a studio at that time, late night, two white girls were just chilling, whatever, right? And then um, we actually drank that night. I drank alcohol. I don't drink at all. I was lit. Uh-oh. I was lit. He was lit. They were lit. It's like, yo, like, <laughs> let's have some fun. Like, let's go back to, to, to the studio. Like, yeah, let's go to the studio. So we go straight to the studio. And then it's like, what do we do? Uh, you know, what, what do we do now? You know, we're lit, whatever. And I was like, you know what, bro? Let's go viral. Let's go on, online right now. On the podcast, so I was like, he's like, what? He's like, yeah, bro, let's let's go live right now. He's like, all right, screw it, let's go, mm. let's do it. So then we go live, and we're just talking about like our date, you know, men and women, you know, all the like raunchy stuff, and people loved it. They were up late night watching it. We we're like, wait, hold on, we got like what five k people watching this oh, right wow. now? Okay, it's like, it's like one in the morning. This is insane. So then I was like, light bulb turns on. I was like, okay, people like this stuff. Mm. So then I started bringing girls that I was talking to on the show and my went to as well. And what happened was is that like, people were like, wow, for the first time we're seeing girls and our creators talk in one space in real time about dating topics. And we're going to hear for the first time how they really think. Because, for example, we've been told, and you've been seeing this as well, it's like an echo chamber. You guys talk about girls, you guys talk about guys, and those in the room to like debate or combat their allegations or their, mm-hmm. you know, their thoughts, right? But for the first time you saw them come together, like, okay, this is what I'm thinking. Rebuttal this or like debate this, right? And uh, even though we were kind of lit, it was like, wow, like, I saw you guys think. I saw we think. So you saw it in real time. And that was the magic, magic of it because now I'm seeing both parties talk about it and debate it in real time. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a conversation that has, I mean, the whole gender dynamics conversations and debates have grown a lot over the last couple of years. But do you remember when I said earlier about the gold digger pranks? Yes. How it went viral? Yeah. So I learned, I learned something from that where like there's three main triggers that make things go viral. Okay. Emotional, which is going to be like the tug of men and women. Like how do they feel about this certain topic? And I think for gold digger pranks, it was like, wow, girls want a guy with money. Guys want a hot girl. But in that instance, it's like, okay, nice car. Guy has money. She sees him as a target or maybe like a guy that can help her to your life. And now they're kind of having this back and forth of like, wait, do you like me? Mm. Do you like my stuff? Emotional tug. Secondly, it's going to be, example, the lifestyle. Like, okay, as a guy, this is what I want to have. Like, he has it. Mm. How do I get that? The girl is, the girl is like, okay, I'm, like, this girl's actually like hot. How do I become that? That's another thing too, like re- relatability. Yes. And then as well, it's going to be more like, the third thing is going to be like, if you're someone watching content, you want to see if you can even like imagine yourself being a part of that experience. Mm -hmm. And most people is like, yeah, I've been the nerd in school that was told no my entire life. And then all of a sudden I'm the owner of this company and now girls want me Mm -hmm. like Elon Musk, maybe for example, I could be wrong, but that I want to say those things right there made things go viral. Yeah. So bringing that to the podcast, that was like the same thing. It's that emotional discussion where like men and women are talking about topics. It's like, wait, no, I think this way. No, mm. she, think, she thinks that way. So that that kind of like same concept right into the podcast as well. Do you know what I think it is as well? Mm. Further from those points that undergirds it all and makes it such a point of interest is two things. You mentioned relatability. Mm. And that is one topic. If you're talking about 
relationships, mating and dating, that is the most core and primal human, and you could even say animal instinct. Yeah. It doesn't matter where you're from, your background, status. your status, your anything about you. Every man, virtually every man and woman on this earth has an interest in mating. Um, and so it's unlike something like sports or politics or um, even aspects of comedy or any niche area of interest, video games, whatever it is. Those all have people who are interested in them. But this is a topic that everybody has an interest in, whether you are, you're married, you're single, you're dating, you're divorced, you're separated, whatever. Everyone has an interest and also everyone has some skin in the game. Even virgins. Everybody. Like, how do I change that? Everybody has skin in the game. Yeah. All right. It doesn't matter your motive. You could be the most, uh, you could be a religious conservative who's been married since you were 20 to your high school sweetheart and you've got eight kids and you have an interest in this conversation. Yeah. You could be uh, the uh, playboy who's just partying and wants to just mess with girls or whatever. You could be uh, a full on incel. You could be, uh, it, do it doesn't matter. Everyone's yeah. got a stake in this and everyone has an opinion. Yes. Everyone's got an opinion and in a way that they feel emotionally charged about this topic. So whenever those conversations come up, it's like everyone can participate. You don't need to be, uh, you, you know, clued up on this particular area. You don't need to be well-researched and maybe it will help if you are, but everyone's got their experience or their ideas that they can bring to the table. That's why when you're bringing like stats and logic, it's almost like if like you're saying, okay, you have an opinion, but is it factual? Mm -hmm. And then it gets into the conversation of, okay, at that point, Who's telling the truth here? Is it your feelings or is it actually facts? But my feelings. I feel this, but I feel I this. Feel like, I feel like. I feel like. <laughs> I was all time on a podcast, bro. Yeah, no doubt. Well, you guys have been, you guys have been very controversial. Yeah. You're still demonetized yes, on we YouTube? Are. Okay. Yeah. How did the demonetization come about? If you can talk about it. So it was a couple of things, but I think the Neil and Coffin was bringing on band creators. Now, mm. uh, I'm on the, of the opinion that sometimes... Is it worth the views? Not really, because at the same time of getting views, your channel itself can be affected. Now, um, we brought on some other creators that I won't name here, but we went down the path of like more edge, more like, I want to say dark world. When you go down that path, you're going to have people that are higher ups or people that are in these spaces where like, they're like, you know what? Not safe for content, not safe for sponsors. We don't mm. want to surround our people. Um, so we're going to cut you off at some point. And now, uh, when you push the line too far, these things happen. Is it smart? Not all the time, but sometimes for your audience, you want to go past the limit to get them this kind of content and like it comes with a price. So that's what we did at that point. And looking back, was it worth it? Yeah, because in the sense of getting demonetized, we had to find ways to make money outside of YouTube. Mm -hmm. And it brought about our own platform where, for example, we have our own membership now, castleclub.tv. We bring on uh, creators, we do Zoom calls, we do meetups, we do brotherhood activities and that created income for, you know, as well, along with Rumble that supported us as well. So it opened up ways to make money outside of YouTube that weren't there before. And uh, I think even though it happened as a bad thing, it turned into a good thing. Yeah. So now you've been running the podcast for 